And by the way, yatim is an important. Yatim has been coming up. If you notice in the previous surah, yatim keeps coming up. Take care of the yatim. Take care of your yatim. And now you yourself are yatim. You yourself were a yateem. The Messenger is being told, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Why the yat- so much mention of the yateem? If you think of a child who's been orphaned, it's the most painful thing to imagine a child losing their parents, by not having their parents anymore. Nobody cares for you like your parents care for you. Even if somebody adopts you, even if it's your uncle, even if it's your relative, no one will ever substitute for your parents. The way they love you, the way they forgive you, the way they overlook your shortcomings, nobody else does that for you. And if you don't have any shelter after your parents are gone, then you are basically the most oppressed in society and nobody hears your cries. The orphan, who's he gonna cry to? Who's he gonna complain to? Your child cries, you run and take care of them. But if we, if you know, our children, ma'ad Allah, if a child is orphaned, who's gonna take care of their cries? Who's gonna fulfill their needs? Who's gonna give them, who's gonna hug them, who's gonna put them to sleep? They don't, they, it's not just a loss of food and shelter. It's that human need to be taken care of that's taken away from them, right? So Allah says, you were in this helpless state. You were in this dark place and Allah Azza wa Jal brought you out. So, وَلَا الْآخِرَةُ خَيْرٌ لَكَ مِنَ الْأُولَى The case is already proven in the past. فَآوَى Then He says, وَوَجَدَكَ ضَالًّا فَهَدَى Very important ayah. If you look at the word ضَال, it means mis, you know, misled. Misled. It also means lost. So the raw translation would be, and he found you lost, then he guided you. Now when we say the people outside on the street are lost, they're going to the clubs, they're drinking, they're doing this, that, they're lost. We say about the Christians, they're lost, they do shirk. غير المغضوب عليهم, same word, ضالين. It is used for people, we don't want to be like them. And in this ayah, Allah is using it for His Messenger وسلم. We have to understand this carefully. Similarly, Musa alayhi salam, when he was questioned by Fir'aun, وَفَعَلْتَ فَعْلَتَكَ الَّتِي فَعَلْتَ وَأَنْتَ مِنَ الْكَافِرِينَ You did that thing you did, you know, you killed that guy. Are you denying it? What did he say? فَعَلْتُهَا إِذَنْ وَأَنَا مِنَ الضَّالِّينَ I did it, but I was from those who were lost. So how do we understand this word? The way it's been explained, by the way, there are, the, the explanation of this comes from the Qur'an itself. Allah Azza wa Jal says, وَإِن كُنْتَ مِنْ قَبْلِهِ لَمِنَ الْغَافِلِينَ And before this revelation came, you were unaware. You were utterly unaware that there's this higher truth, this wisdom, that could only have come from Allah, you can't figure it out yourself. You were completely unaware of it. And comparing your state after the revelation came, to before the revelation came, you can only be described as what? Lost. But even his lost state is better than most of us today. Right? He never committed shirk, he was on the fitrah. And when the scholars describe the fitrah of, of, of the prophets, especially, alayhi wasallatu wasalam, they don't commit shirk, they don't commit any evil acts, they are the best and most, most righteous of people. Even, in, even before the revelation comes, they have all the elements of the best of, a, of the believers. They already have all of that. But the highest wisdom, the highest wisdom, what exactly do we have to do for our master? How do we call him? What pleases him? What displeases him? What do we owe him? That we are lost. At that point, we are lost. So you can have a decent person, but if you have someone, you know, even a decent person doesn't know everything about what they owe to their, their Creator, in that sense he was lost, and some actually even better define it, he was seeking. He found you seeking. You know, when somebody is lost, what are they doing? They're seeking. So the implication is, he found you searching for truth. In other words, as Islah, he comments in Tadabur al-Qur'an, he says at this point, the Messenger ﷺ is raised in a society where people do shirk. It doesn't fit his taste. He can't, he can't stand shirk. He doesn't go and be part of useless gatherings. The people of the book have corrupted their books. Even that doesn't satisfy him. So he is disturbed about where do, where do you find truth? He's seeking desperately for it. And it is at that desperate moment that... And you know, some even comment that the fact that he used to go reflect in the cave, and he used to leave society even before revelation came, it is because he was so dissatisfied with what was there. There was nothing there that satisfied his quest for truth. So he would go and reflect and reflect and reflect, but the human mind cannot find that truth on its own. So Allah, Allah describes that state of the Messenger searching وسلم, and He gives it fahada. And this is essentially, if you want to look at it from an outsider's point of view, this is essentially the difference between a philosopher and a prophet.